In this video, we're going to humanize our drum tracks. And by humanize, I mean affect different parameters of our MIDI notes that will create a more human feel. Now there's two parameters involved in humanizing drum tracks. One is called velocity, and that's the velocity at which the drum is hit. So if you watched a drummer play, you'd notice he doesn't always hit every drum at the same intensity. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change some of the velocities of the notes, and that's gonna create a more humanistic feel. The other is to move some of these MIDI notes from directly on the grid. Right now we have a nice, stiff performance. And because we're using multi-layer samples, it's not as obvious, but we want to move some of these notes off the grid so it's not so robotic. That's the other element that's going to make our drum tracks stand out for the crowd. So we're going to take this section by section, and I'm going to start out by moving the notes first. And then I'm going to come back and affect the velocity. So let's get started. I'm going to solo the MIDI notes so we're only hearing the drums. And we're going to take this section by section. Like I said, the first section here is really short. Okay. So I'm going to go into slip mode. I'm going to grab these three hi-hats, and I'm going to just pull them a little off the grid. Okay? I'm actually going to go forward, because I think that the excitement of coming in, the drummer will probably be earlier than later. Okay? And the same thing with these two notes. I'm just going to pull them the slightest bit over. Now you'll notice when I go into slip mode that my grid goes away. So you have to sometimes just use your best judgment and then go back to the grid and see how far you've come off. Let's hear this in context. Okay, great. The next section is our wonderful intro. And for this, I am going to start with our crash cymbal, which we're riding on. Now, a drummer will not play a cymbal like we've programmed it here. He will not hit it at the same velocity over and over and over exactly on the grid. So instead of going in and touching each individual note with my little pointer tool, I'm going to select all the notes here by clicking the key that's associated with these notes. And like you've seen before, it's going to select everything in our track. I'm going to right click and go to Event Operations and Quantize. Now you may say, Quantize, we already quantized our MIDI notes because we've been using grid mode. Well, you're correct. But in our Quantize Event Operation window, we have the option to randomize our notes. And by selecting a percentage, we can tell the computer at what percentage to randomize these notes. So let's go with 11% uh, for now. And I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see what happens when we apply. Okay, so you can see this note went a little before the grid, this a little after, but none of them are exactly on these lines anymore, which is important. So let's go ahead and listen to that. Make sure it doesn't sound strange. Sounds good. So you've kind of taken all these notes together, and if we really need to come back, we can do it, but they're all just enough off the grid to be, you know, kosher. Let's go to these guys, the splash, splashy symbol, and we're going to do the same thing. Except this time I'm going to change the percentage to, let's say, 13. I'm going to apply that, and it moved them over just a little bit. Now, this might not sound good because they're going to hit at different times. So I'm actually going to move that one back over with its counterpart. So they're similarly hit. Let's take a look at our kick and snare. Now the kick and snare we can do the same thing with if we wish. So let's go ahead and randomize them a little bit. I'm going to go 8% on the snare. I've got to do it in 16th notes though or else it's going to take my drum rolls away. There we go. And let's just 
dial in here and see, okay, nothing's really exactly on the grid, which is good. And lastly, our kick. Let's go uh, good old 5%. And those guys should all be moved about 5%. Okay, those hi-hats are really locked on the grid. And no drummer ever is going to play that robotic and stiff. So we're going to need to do the same thing here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to right-click, Event Operations, and Quantize. And with the hi-hat, let's make it a uh, 12%. going to apply that. I'm actually going to raise it up just a little bit. Let's go 15%. The hi-hat is something that he's really not going to be locked on the grid. And if you're not seeing a terrible amount of movement, let's actually raise it up. Let's go 21, 22. There we go. The hi-hat is probably going to be the most variated instrument because they're hitting it so constantly, it's, it's unlikely they're going to frequently hit it perfectly on. So we want to have that variation. That's really going to increase the sound of our drums being more humanistic. Okay. And it's really loud right now, but we're going to mix it later. I'm going to go to the open hi-hat here, which I thought we changed to a different note. Yeah, that's the one. Let's get in here and zoom in on these guys. We'll go ahead and randomize these. And we'll stick with 22. some toms here that we haven't touched yet. Just going to grab all of them at once and let's give them a little bit of randomness. 10% will work. Now, you can go in and, and spend as much time as you want perfecting this and moving each note from the grid, or you can do it with the event operations. That's completely up to you. For the purpose of this video, I just wanted you to be aware that we want to keep things from being exactly on the grid. Let's go ahead and take a break right here. When we come back, we'll change the velocity of our mini notes to create a more humanistic drum performance.